Welcome to Canadian Steam on the Move, Part 2. Motion pictures of Canadian steam locomotives are indeed a rare form of entertainment for those of us who spend our free moments at trackside with very, very simple photographic equipment so long ago. This is Doug Haddo, and again with photographer John Freising, we think we have some fine film footage that may restore some of this nostalgia. Join with John and me now as we view steam action in eastern Canada in those not-so-long-forgotten days of Canadian steam on the move. Doug, at the end of June 1957, I made a trip to Detroit to photograph steam locomotive operation on the suburban service from Pontiac, Michigan to downtown Detroit. I'm at Highland Park Station in the uh, suburbs of Detroit, and we have Grand Trunk Western Northern 6409, the train 72, approaching from Pontiac, followed by Pacific 5632 with train 74 from Pontiac. Now, these aren't Canadian steam locomotives, but they're certainly locomotives owned by a railway company, which in turn was owned by a Canadian railway company. And to uh, steam fans of Canadian power, uh, these are carbon copies of the Canadian thing, and so therefore assume a great deal of interest for us. The next day, I was just at the edge of the approach to Brush Street Station in downtown Detroit. Uh, we have 6040, a mountain class, uh, riding the train 70 from Pontiac, followed by the last of the northern series of Grand Trunk Western 6410 on train 22 from Durand. And it's worth noting that this last five of the 6400s was built in 1938 by the Lima Locomotive Works, whereas 6400 to 6404 uh, were built in 1936 by MLW. Again, we have another Northern, 6406, with train 72 from Pontiac. You'll note the very short consist of the trains because it's a Saturday, and their normal load of around 11 to 12 cars is reduced to two or three cars in each case. A very overpowered train, would you think, John? Definitely. Probably better pulled by a diesel switcher. You'll note the locomotive whistling for the switch tender for lining up into the Grand, into the Grand Trunk Western uh, Depot. 5632 here on train 74 with an enclosed all-weather cab. And compare this, Doug, with the next Pacific that you'll see shortly, 5628. These uh, Grand Trunk Western Pacifics looked a lot heavier and more powerful than they really were because of that particular cab. Not to be confused with the low-numbered 5600s, which ran out of Hamilton uh, in the Allendale, uh, Palmerston area for so many years. Here's 5628 uh, with the morning accommodation from Durand, Michigan, via Pontiac. Uh, this uh, locomotive, of course, has an, an what would we be calling an open-type uh, cab. These uh, locomotives uh, were very popular on the Grand Trunk Western, and one, I believe, has been preserved by a rail fan in the United States. I believe it's 5629. Am I correct on that, John? I think so. Here's 5632 again in the, the evening of the same day out by Bloomfield Hills, returning to Pontiac with train 79. From a distance, they look a great deal like the 3700 Macados on the Grand Trunk Western with that particular cab configuration. This is Macadam, New Brunswick. Uh, just about a year later, May of 1958, uh, we have Pacific 2628 on the CPR with train 181 arriving from St. John, New Brunswick. Uh, they immediately backed another Pacific on the other end, 2598, turned the train around, and here it is leaving for Edmonston from McAdam as train 123. I then proceeded down to Watt uh, Station on the line from McAdam to St. Andrews by the Sea. And Doug, I have an unusual scene here of a CPR Jubilee 2926 on the mixed train down to St. Andrews by the Sea. I had come down on an earlier train, the gas electric accommodation, which had proceeded on from Watt to St. Saint, uh, Saint Stephen's. Uh, 2926 had a very brief stay in Toronto when she first uh, came out in 1938, but uh, then uh, proceeded east to, to, the uh, to the maritime region. A lot of her sisters stayed out in western Canada, 
but 2925 and 2928 were regular in John Street and ran uh, frequently to Hamilton and to Havelock on short passenger runs. They were a little bit different than the 3000s. They had uh, driving wheels that were five inches shorter in diameter. A very, very interesting little engine. Another significant difference, of course, was that the 29 series uh, were hand bomber stokered engines, whereas the 3000s had duplex automatic stokers in them. 2926 is switching the Connolly Lobster plant in McAdam, which generated a fair amount of business. Lobsters were shipped from here all over eastern Canada. The next day, I proceeded on the CPR passenger service from McAdam up to Edmonston. This is a D4 class 10 wheeler being used at the northern part of the line because of light axle loading. From Edmonston, I proceeded down to Plaster Rock, New Brunswick. This is the yard, looking down on the yard of Plaster Rock with, again, another one of the numerous D10 10-wheeler class, number 806, making up the mixed train for the run down to Perth Junction. It, would, it was at Perth Junction that we would meet the regular train coming back from Edmonston to McAdam. Here we are uh, booming along the St. John River, and in the cab, of course, is the ever-present hogger with his fireman down on the deck, bailing in the diamond. At Perth Junction, I disembarked and crossed over the St. John River, and here we have the same engine returning to Plaster Rock with the return mix train. From here, I hitchhiked up to Aroostook, to catch train 124 from Edmonston back to McAdam. And much to my amazement, and uh, I noticed train 124 arriving on the front end, was none other than D4 class 10 wheeler 492, which I believe we had seen in previous pictures here operating on the mixed train up to Bob Cajun. That engine has a familiar ring to it, uh, John. I believe it operated on the uh, Havelock sub between Lindsay and Dranael. The next day, I was at Fredericton at Unan Junction watching the departure of the mixed train for Woodstock, again behind another D-10-10 wheeler. And Doug, this is a very familiar looking type of mixed train operation. I believe saw some service in Lampton in its career towards the end of steam days. Viewers will be rather interested in the car which you see here, an old CP combine, wooden one, that uh, was typical of so much of the old CP equipment that hung on to the end. An interesting feature of Fredericton is the operation of gas electric car 9003 which was the regular connection from Fredericton to Fredericton Junction for passengers traveling to either Montreal or St. John, New Brunswick. Here's 9003 turning on the Y, preparing itself for a return trip to Fredericton Junction. From here, I proceeded to Chipman, New Brunswick, the hallowed shrine of the and home of the three remaining operating 440s on main line or with a main line railway company in North America. 29, 136, and 144. 29 had just returned from Angus Shops having undergone repairs and 136 was in operation this day seen here arriving in with the mixed train from Norton, New Brunswick. I guess uh fans at that time didn't realize that 136 would become quite a star in future television programs of Pierre Burton's books on the CPR, and that the engine itself would become part of the Ontario Rail Collection uh, soon to run again and uh, uh, provide great pleasure for those of us who were interested in steam in those days. Chippin is a page out of history. The operation really hadn't changed in this yard 
nor its setting for a good number of years. After turning its train around, 136 proceeded to the coaling dock to be refueled, and the operation is something that goes back a good 40 or 50 years. Mr. John Myers is the regular engineer on 136, and it was through his capable and loving care that these locomotives had such a long life. You'll note this coaling operation, Doug, uh, typical Armstrong, combination of Armstrong and using steam from the locomotive. Um, I can appreciate how dirty those guys got as they did that coaling operation. I can't imagine what wintertime conditions were like doing that sort of work. 144 is parked here in the engine house, and uh, the locomotives would be exchanged roughly every two or three days. This is the return trip to Norton, backing into the station at Chipman to pick up what few passengers would be traveling on to Norton that day. With the roundhouse, the combine, and the engine, scenes like this would delight the heart of many a model railroader. We're in Norton, New Brunswick. This is the other end of the line, Norton, New Brunswick. The hostler has taken over operation of the locomotive and he was busily shaking down the fire and slowly moving it into the engine shed for the night. We're now in Spring Hill, Nova Scotia, watching the operation of the Cumberland Railway and Coal Company. This is mixed train three arriving from Parsboro on its way to Spring Hill Junction. Through the lack of turning facilities at Parsboro, the engine was running tender first. You'll note that the station has seen better days insofar as paint is concerned. Um, there was very little traffic for the mixed operation in the form of passengers, and I was delighted to still see the service still in operation. I rode the line to Spring Hill Junction and disembarked here while they turned the locomotive around. Some of the viewers may identify this locomotive as X New York Central. Certainly looks that way. The uh, locomotive uh, was pulling the most ancient combine that I had seen, uh, a real wooden gem with open vestibules, and uh, the whole operation, again, really belonged in a museum. We didn't appreciate those scenes so much in those days, but now they're priceless, aren't they, John? They certainly are. And unfortunately, the railway has disappeared, and I'm not sure of the whereabouts of the combine, uh, whether it's still in existence or not. But uh, there... If this scene could be reenacted, advertised, and played again, I just wonder how many thousands of rail fans would be out with their cameras and tape recorders. A terrific vignette of the past. On my way back to Toronto, a brief stop at St. John, New Brunswick at their Bayshore roundhouse to see D4 453 moving on to the turntable. An amazing number of these small engines around at the very end, weren't there, John? Uh, just uh, putting on a show. Uh, a lot of railways uh, probably scrapped some of this power uh, in the United States 30, 40 years before these photographs were taken. This is the north end of Central Station. In Montreal, we see one of the CN Electric multiple unit commuter trains arriving from Saint Eustache, train 356. Rather unusual view taken from the Queen Elizabeth Hotel, and unfortunately today this cannot be duplicated because this area has been covered over by the construction of a commercial building complex known as Placeville Marie. At the other end of the Mount Royal Tunnel, the line intersected uh, with the belt line around Montreal and with the line to Hervé and from Harvey up to Chicoutimi. This is Northern 6203, having arrived in on train 113 from Harvey, 
and has been cut off to run around the belt line to the Turcotte Roundhouse. There was, of course, a ban of steam locomotives running through Mount Royal Tunnel. The replacement power, CNR electric locomotive, number 188, would back onto this train and proceed around the connecting Y onto the line from Val Royale and San Eustache and proceed down through the tunnel into Montreal CN Station. These electric motors are most amazing. They're still running today, most of them 40 to 50 years in age. They handle the backbone of the commuter service through the Mount Royal Tunnel or CN Railway. Of course. Here we are at Ottawa now, John, looking over the Ottawa River and the Alexandria Bridge. And D4417 is just coming in uh, from Waltham on the Waltham Local. Doug, there are a number of interesting local train operations. In addition to the mix service from Waltham, uh, there was also a daily train in from Manawaki, usually with a gas electric operation. You'll see here 9,004 arriving. That's the sister to 9,003 we saw just previously at Fredericton. And uh, 9,004 is towing a trailer, 9,002. Those particular units were uh, operating at Guelph Junction sometime in their career, were they not? Definitely. And also, Doug, uh, I think in your own backyard, uh, the Toronto Hamilton Buffalo Railway had a gas electric car. Old number 301, how well I remember it. Here we have uh, Alco Unit 4097 towing out 417 and 9004 back to Hull and over to Ottawa West uh, where the roundhouse of the CPR was located. Only the CPR would have a lash up like that, John. This is Washago, the north end of Lake Simcoe, about 90 miles north of Toronto. The end of August 1958, and CN Northern 6235 is on the daily passenger train from North Bay to Toronto, train 44. Doug, uh, if you remember correctly, these trains used to be hauled uh, usually by a 6,000 class mountain. I can even remember them being pulled by a 282 3400 class. That goes way back, John. Well, in the latter days of steam operation, 6235, having been bumped from other service, found itself in being the regular road engine on this particular train. John, one of my uh, favorite places to watch trains in the days of steam was Guelph Junction, and here we see CPR 5214 on train 341 at Guelph Junction. As a kid, I used to hitchhike to Puss Lynch and then walk all the distance along the tracks, watching trains, snapping pictures with my box camera, all the way down to Guelph Junction, and then catch the evening train from Godrich back to Hamilton. It was a wonderful way to spend the time, and uh, I have vivid memories of all that happening. A little west of uh, Guelph Junction is Kitchener on the Canadian National Line from Toronto to Stratford. And, Doug, uh, we're going to look at uh, two examples of the mainstay of the steam engine switching fleet of Canadian National used across the country. And these are um, known as six-wheel switchers. Uh, 7501 here uh, switching the yard in Kitchener. And uh, in a moment you'll see its sister, 7446. One of the last types of engines on the CN to go to the torch, I believe, John. They were used right up until the end before the diesel switcher came in. They certainly were very numerous, and you could find them practically throughout the system, uh, as you say, uh, right up to the end. And they have been used, as uh, can be seen in the Strasbourg Railway in the States, as an excursion engine, very functional in that role. On our way to Goderich, and we have the morning train number 35 from Stratford to Goderich, crossing highway number 8 with Pacific 5580. Beautiful example of a Grand Trunk locomotive from the early years of this century. 
Goderich uh, had a lot of interest in Days of Steam, uh, served both by Canadian Pacific and Canadian National. This is the resident town switcher for the CPR, again another example of a six-wheel switcher, and uh, backing down to the engine house by the harbor. Goderich, of course, Doug was a terminus for many lake freighters carrying grain, and uh, we have here a rather unique example of CNR consolidation type 2347, which I believe was an ex-Canadian Northern locomotive. These locomotives, of course, were used in uh, freight helper service a great deal by the CN, particularly seen around Bayview Junction up to Copetown, just west out of Hamilton, ascending the Niagara Escarpment. In addition, they were used on local freight trains and uh, way freights all over uh, the system, uh, certainly very numerous in the last days of steam in uh, southern Ontario. In the late 40s, I once saw three of them pulling time freight 490 uh, east into Mimico from uh, Hamilton, and that was quite an interesting lash-up. Vandorf, CNR overpass over Woodbine Avenue, and we have northern 6184, on an extra westbound for Parry Sound up the Ballast Subdivision in full stride. That engine uh, worked regularly east Montreal to Halifax on the Maritime Express. Saturday, October the 18th, by Cherry Street Interlocker in downtown Toronto, Northern 6228, arriving with the overnight sleeping car train, the Northland, from Timmins and North Bay. This locomotive was a regular feature at the end of steam operation on this train, having been displaced from its former regular service between Toronto and Montreal. Doug, take a good look at the consist. You'll find a New York Central sleeping car in here. That's a very interesting uh, uh, part of the train. I, I wonder why it was there. Do you have any date on it that? Could have been a charter, or it might have been in regular service. Later the same day, at Scarborough, CNR Junction Station on the Oshawa subdivision, and we have local train 96 from Belleville behind Pacific 5302. This was one of the final runs of this train as this service was discontinued shortly after these pictures were taken. And Doug, just north um, from Scarborough Junction on the way up on the old line to Blackwater Junction and Lindsay, we're at Goodwood passing train 96, which is in the siding. That was the morning accommodation from Belleville. And here we are watching the last departure of the morning train from Toronto to Lindsay, leaving Blackwater Junction. Again, one of those heavy Pacifics, I believe. They were the regular features on this service for, oh, the last 10 to 15 years of the operation of this passenger train service. Real workhorse in passenger service for the CN, I think. Mimico, just at the west end of Toronto, underneath the Queen Elizabeth overpass, and here's a Sister Pacific 5302 on train 76, arriving in with the morning local train from Hamilton. This, of course, is now all go train service. Those locomotives had uh, smoke deflectors at some time in their career, didn't they, John? Certainly did. Here we come uh, westbound on train number 101 to Niagara Falls. This was quite a train in its day. It contained sleepers and a dining car, which had been put on the train from the overnight Montreal uh, train, and uh, usually had some rather interesting power. Today it's 6069, a bullet-nosed mountain-type locomotive, but it wasn't... Uh, unusual to see a 6400 or a 5700 class Hudson on this train. Northern 6226 with the inbound Maple Leaf from New York City. This was the old Lehigh Valley sleeping car train that crossed over into Canada at Niagara Falls, Ontario. I believe there's a Lehigh Valley uh, car on this train, John? Yes, a regular feature, which no one could really explain, is a Lehigh Valley Combine, and you'll see its second car from the engine seemed to be in captured Canadian service. 
Later the same day, we're um, up by Mount Dennis, Eglinton Avenue, near the Kodak plant. And uh, here we have one of the CN Mountains, 6014 on train, train 28 from Stratford. And this was usually the, the, the motive power used on this uh, type of service. Once again, John, uh, this locomotive was a refugee from the Atlantic region. It saw most of its service in eastern lines in Nova Scotia. Doug, uh, December of 1958, extremely cold weather just before Christmas. Again, this is the Maple Leaf arriving behind Northern 6215 from New York, accelerating out of uh, Sunnyside Station. And I'll bet there's a Lehigh Valley Combine second car from the locomotive. Right behind the Maple Leaf is the overnight train from New York to Toronto via the THNB in Hamilton. The Toronto connection, of course, this morning is being pulled by locomotive 2839, one of five Royal Hudsons which operated north out of Toronto to Fort William were equipped with boosters and I believe this was one of the longest locomotive runs in steam history. Doug, later that day uh, we went further west to Bronte, northern 6185, eastbound with a freight for Mimico Yard. followed by Northern 6301, and uh, passing westbound is Northern 6210 on one of the local trains from Toronto to London, Ontario. Very busy scene here, and uh, so reminiscent of those winter afternoons when we spent time watching trains. Northern 6246, again with another eastbound freight for Mimico, did we think steam would ever end, John, in those days? We just well, took it all for granted, didn't we? Not quite. That's why these pictures were being taken. And then, Doug, on Christmas Eve, Logan Avenue level crossing on the Oshawa subdivision. This is Advance 14, the morning train to Montreal. The International taking, Limited. Taking a run up Danforth Hill with... 6201 on the front end. That was a very slow train east of Toronto, but from uh, from uh, Port Huron to Toronto, it was a very fast train. A little later in the day, at Danforth CNR Station, halfway up the hill to Scarborough, we have third section of Train 6, the Inner City Limited, for Ottawa. And arriving is 6228 on advance train number five from Montreal and of course with the Christmas season there's lots of extra sections running and this is the last day of the year in 1958 mountain class 6031 arriving with the morning train from Owen Sound. The 6031 was a regular at the Spadina Roundhouse and uh, saw service in southern Ontario uh, almost her entire career and I might add existed right till the very end of steam in the Toronto area. Brief trip to New Brunswick over New Year's of 1959, St. John Bayshore CPR Yard, an example of the CPR Decapod class, 5754. And if I remember correctly, Doug, uh, sister of this engine That's used right. to run in Toronto. 5756 was... Uh, uh, quartered at John Street Roundhouse and used in heavy transfer service around the Parkdale area, and uh, uh, it was regularly seen right uh, till the end in that role. And a visit to Chipman, New Brunswick, again to see the Canadian Pacific 440s in action. Again, we have CPR 136 on the mixed train from Norton to Chipman and pushing a snowplow. Again, a rather interesting piece of passenger equipment uh, behind the locomotive. Modelers, please take note. Saturday, January the 17th, and a double-headed freight train from Mimico uh, into Hamilton, 
Normally, you'd expect to see uh, this arrangement going up Dundas Mountain. Instead, uh, this train is going into Hamilton on its way to Fort Erie, and the pilot engine, 3272, leading 6184, is uh, going to be used, presumably, to get up the Meriton Hill. Rather interesting uh, combination, a western locomotive and a maritime engine, both strangers to the southern Ontario region at that time. Train 83 backing out from um, the Hamilton CNR station. Doug, uh, this was a regular feature, eh, uh, for trains proceeding to Windsor that used to call it at Hamilton? Yes, 83 was uh, something that uh, was part of my life growing up at Bayview and usually had 6071 on it, interminably it seems. Today it has Northern 6226. And having backed out from the Hamilton station, it's now turning off the line from Hamilton and heading up the uh, Bayview Hill to Coketown and on to London, Ontario. A lot of head-end uh, cars on this particular train uh, indicate to one and all uh, what its purpose really was at that time. Later the same day, and we're at Burlington CNR Station just east of Hamilton, and Bayview Junction, and Hudson 5701 on the Forest City, train 75 from Toronto to London, making good time. Just barreling through. I would love to know exactly what its speed was there, but it really moved at the Burlington uh, crossing. In early February of 1959 in Belleville, that's the first divisional point uh, east of Toronto on the line to Montreal, and time is very near. Uh, for complete replacement of steam power on this line. Northern 6246 is coming down the lead from Belleville Roundhouse to take over a eastbound time freight to Montreal, which had arrived behind Northern 6243. Those MLWs, 6200s in the later series, uh, were just about the state of the art in steam locomotion at the time they were built. And I think today they would hold their own. They were, of course, dual service and uh, were equally used on freight and passenger and uh, were seen very often on the pool trains uh, uh, eastbound out of Toronto. Doug, you'll note uh, in the background is the coaling tower which used to straddle the main line to uh, Montreal and if you remember correctly on the passenger service you used to leave Belleville station eastbound and then make a stop here where the locomotives were refueled for the rest of the run to Montreal. And the engine crews changed of course because Belleville was the end of the first subdivision from Toronto. Now of course uh, trains run right through with a stop there but certainly nothing of any length. These two locomotives exemplify the U2H class 484, uh, the last Northerns built for the CNR, and uh, they were very prominent both in freight and passenger service. In the latter context, uh, they were used on the pool trains uh, at the very end of their life and replaced some of the lighter power which was originally intended on the shorter trains such as the 5700s and the 6400s. Just south of West Toronto uh, Junction, we have Northern 6213 on the morning train, train 29, to Stratford in London. This was not a normal roster for CN Northerns, but the end was very near. Diesels had been arriving from Montreal Locomotive Works and were displacing the Northerns on a number of passenger runs. Sunnyside Station and the Maple Leaf inbound to Toronto behind Northern 6214. Doug, Sunnyside Station has completely disappeared today, and you have to look very hard to find it. Right behind train 94 is a transfer from Mimico Yard to Spadina with engine number 3282. Doug, note the uh, old form of piggyback trailer um, certainly has changed both in size and color today. In the next scene, 
at Mimico Station, we see Maritime Expatriate, 6112, backing out from the roundhouse lead. Uh, this engine was perhaps one of the most beautiful of the Northerns, uh, with its enormous Ilesco feedwater heater. A joy to watch, John, I believe. In the background is Hudson 5701, arriving with the counterpart of the Forest City. That's the morning train from London, train 82. And later the same day, out by Dixie Road level crossing, the west end of Mississauga, we have Northern 6221 eastbound with train 80, a midday train from London to Toronto. Again, these trains 10 years before would not have been pulled by such heavy power. Probably much lighter locomotives would have been used. Mountain 6031 running light through Burlington CN Station. They're really a long-legged, lanky machine, aren't they, Doug? Yes, and I believe that day it, this uh, locomotive was being used in helper service in the Hamilton area. Hamilton West Junction, Doug, your backyard, and here's a CP Mike 5135 backing up the hill towards Guelph Junction with a special movement. At the other end of the Y is train number 83, gathering momentum for its climb of the Niagara Escarpment behind Northern 6211, a regular afternoon feature for the Bayview rail fan. At the other end of Bayview Junction, we see the transition underway from steam to diesel. One of the general purpose class diesels from London, Ontario, General Motors 4506, assisting Northern 6223 with an eastbound freight, probably from Fort Erie to Mimico Yard at Toronto. That was a very stiff grade uh, out of Hamilton, and many times uh, locomotives stumbled and faltered trying to get out of there. Doug, Northern 6246 coming down the hill from London, Ontario into Hamilton Yard. Obviously the smoke inspector isn't around today, or if he is, the fireman certainly doesn't seem to care. And later that afternoon over at Burlington Station, we have CN brand new yard switcher, road switcher type 1305 from General Motors having just battle the snows on the line down from Allendale. Immediately behind this operation is Northern 6185 with an extra westbound freight from Toronto to London having stopped to fill up with water. Now that locomotive will be assisted at Bayview by probably a Mikado up the Niagara Escarpment past Dundas and on to Copetown, where the pilot engine, or helper, will be uh, uncoupled, will run light back down to Bayview, and will assist another freight train uh, up the hill. And that particular uh, union of engines is about to take place uh, some uh, 12 miles beyond where this picture was taken. Must be a heavy train, John, from all the sliding we see on those tracks, or maybe the rails are just slippery. Sunday, February the 22nd, east end of Toronto at Scarborough Station, and we have Northern 6206 topping the Scarborough Hill with the third section of Train 6, the Inner City Limited, and this is the section that goes to Ottawa and form part of the old pool train service. Those numerous sections which ran on number six, uh, were they a common thing on uh, very Sunday afternoons? Very much so on Sunday afternoons. And by this time, the first two sections were normally diesel hauled. John, this is a very, very typical example of a 
pool train operation with a CN locomotive pulling almost entirely CP cars. Easter weekend of 1959 marked the end of regular CN steam operation on passenger train in southwestern Ontario. This is the west end of Toronto Union Station with the northern 6214 backing in. There had been quite a heavy snowfall that day and you can see Doug the method of clearing the switches of snow using flaming kerosene. Uh, the CPR still had some time to go with its steam-powered passenger operations. Is that correct, John? Yes, uh, for a few more months. Here's Hudson 2857 leaving with the morning train for Buffalo via Hamilton. But you'll see beside it is the morning CPR train for Windsor and Detroit, which had already been converted to diesel power. Twenty-eight fifty-seven, of course, was the last regular passenger-operated Hudson around the Toronto area and ended up doing a couple of special railway enthusiast trips at the close of her career. Yes, I remember one very successful trip behind 2857, which was in May of 1960 in the Upper Canada Railway Society fan trip to Port McNichol. Later in the day, 2857 is on her way back into Toronto with train 326, the afternoon train from Buffalo to Toronto, here at Dixie Road level crossing west of Toronto. She would have been serviced at the Chatham Street Roundhouse of the THB. Here we are at the Toronto Canadian National Exhibition location, and we have a freight train hauled by Northern 6231, and it's heading towards Mimico with its consist. Few holdouts of steam on the CPR existed uh, well into 1959. This is Trenton. First subdivision east of Toronto on the Canadian Pacific Line from Toronto to Montreal. Old Consolidation 3507 was the local yard switcher being used at that time. It's interesting that most of the power we see in these photographs has been left to sort of fall apart in terms of its uh, uh, cosmetic beauty. They haven't done much in the way of painting or uh, scrubbing at all. It's just uh, very, the engines look very tired and worn out. Certainly would agree with that comment, Doug. It's interesting to note that some of the older examples of steam power lasted well beyond uh, the retirement date of much newer models of steam power. John, I would think that that would probably de be dependent on uh, the last date of retubing and uh, any of the other uh, uh, class repairs that had to be done at the various shops around the province. The last pocket of steam operation on the Canadian Pacific in southern Ontario was in the Aurelia, Port McNichol area with three or four locomotives based at Port McNichol. In the summer of 1959, CP Mike 5102 was on the wave freight from Port McNichol over to Aurelia. Here she is switching in the yard in downtown Aurelia by the shores of Lake Kuchiching. Note the all-weather enclosed water tower, which was a typical feature of CPR in many parts of Ontario. And one that many model railroaders probably have duplicated on their pikes in the basements of their homes. All these tracks have now been removed, Doug, and uh, the area is under redevelopment. Just outside of Aurelia, Mike 5102 is on her way back to Port McNichol with the return way freight. Certainly an undersized train for 
a locomotive that was traditionally used in heavy CPR freight service. You got a lot of cab rides, I see, John. Well, the crews, I think, realized the end was near, and they were very, very cooperative in both trying to pose for photographs and allowing you access uh, to see what it was like in the cab of a steam locomotive. And this particular crew was in charge of Consolidation 3422, which was both the yard switcher Port McNichol and the power for the transfer over the short distance from Port McNichol to Midland, Ontario, where there were, were a number of grain elevators that the CPR used to regularly service. This was in the fall of 1959, and it seems very odd that there were only two steam locomotives in operation that particular day in this part of the world on the CPR. Approaching Martyr Shrine on the way to Midland, and by prearrangement with the engine crew, they agreed to lay on a little bit of smoke and then blow the whistle. And you'll see the engineer checking to make sure that I'm up there photographing. <laughs> John, this is your private rail fan trip, I see. Just about, Doug. Here we are in Midland, doing some switching around by the grain elevators. Doug, there was a large number of Great Lakes freighters that were used in bringing grain down in the fall for storage and transshipping in Midland, and both the CNR and the CPR used to run grain trains, I believe, from Midland across central Ontario and down to the St. Lawrence Valley for transfer either to ocean-going freighters at Montreal or for further storage on St. Lawrence River ports such as Prescott, and Kingston. Yes, considerable traffic was used on that line uh, that ran through Peterborough, and of course, after this uh, particular operation disappeared, it uh, was not necessary to use that trackage, and so, as we know, between Tweed and Glen Tay, uh, the old O and Q line has now uh, been torn up. But that was the routing they took originally uh, from Port McNichol to Montreal. Back in December of 1959, leaving Orillia with the way freight again for Port McNichol, this time with Consolidation 3722, an old friend of yours, Doug. Yes, uh, used to be nicknamed the Mud Hen, and it was a Lampton-based engine and used quite extensively on the Oars Lake push west out of Toronto to Oars Lake. Also, I think, eastbound from Toronto, too, it was in... Uh, constant use, uh, helping freight trains up the hill to Asian Court. That's right, and uh, I have seen it many times in those days at Leaside. So uh, it was a regular Toronto area engine which spent its last days up here in the Park McNichol area. The Mud Hen, as we used to call her. 3722 entering Port McNichol and crossing the famed Hog Bay Trestle. A structure made entirely of wood. Our research shows us that it was 2,141 feet long and uh, just recently, of course, has been uh, dismantled. The engine crew were so obliging, Doug, that they ran over the trestle a second time. Was there a speed restriction on the bridge? Uh, did you know of John or uh... yes I believe it was uh, 10 miles an hour and of course the bridge uh, supported uh, fairly heavy locomotives uh, Hudson's and Mikado's were both frequent users uh, of the bridge into uh, Port McNichol New Year's weekend 1959 entering 1960 and a trip to visit steam operation for the last time in the Montreal area in regular operation on the CPR. This is Smith's Falls and an old friend, Pacific 2238. Yes, yeah, a very uh, frequent visitor to the Hamilton area for a long time uh, was on the Hamilton Godrich passenger run. And also uh, was a frequent visitor 
on the line to Orangeville with a midnight freight train operation which used to be called the Moonbeam. And you could practically set your watch by 22.38's departure from Orangeville. Now in uh, Montreal, this is Montreal West CPR Station, Tuesday morning, December the 29th, in a raging blizzard. These are the morning commuter trains into Montreal, generally hauled by Pacifics and Hudsons. Here's uh, Pacific 2426 with train 180 from St. Therese. It's hard to believe that uh, a week or so after these pictures were taken, steam was gone forever. And I remember, John, when you took these pictures, uh, you saying that the, the, it was so cold that the lenses on the cameras fogged up a bit. They did more than fog up. The uh, mechanism in the movie camera quite often froze, and I'd have to go into the station and hover around the radiator until things thawed out. However, notwithstanding the cold weather, these G-Class Pacifics still performed without any trouble, Here's Pacific 2412 with a train from Vaudreuil inbound from Montreal. Notice the specifically designed uh, commuter coaches that you see in these photographs. Close behind 2412 is Royal Hudson 2820 with train 246 from Regal. Uh, this particular locomotive is the very first one of the H-1B class, and I think the first 10 of that series were in the Montreal area, operating both uh, on the transcontinental runs and also on the Montreal-Quebec service. St. Luke Yard and the engine house, and uh, this is the final lineup of steam, uh, which would soon be gone forever, as we mentioned earlier. Over at the roundhouse and on the turntable, we're going to see uh, G3D Pacific uh, 2334. Uh, this engine had a sister, or sisters as we may put it, 2332 and 2337, which uh, operated on the Toronto to Buffalo service from 1938 to 1948, were well known in the Hamilton area, and were both equipped with the New York Central automatic train stop device. It's interesting to note, John, that the St. Luke Roundhouse that we see here was the one of the last, if not the last, CP Roundhouse ever to be built, and it didn't have a, a life of much longer than 10 years, if I'm correct. The next day at Montreal Westmount CPR Station, Pacific 1258 backing its train out from Windsor Station to the turning loop or commuter trains just west of Westmount Station. Rather unique uh, procedure, Doug. They used to back out the commuter trains around the turning loop and then back into the coach yard here, which was known as the Glen. Pacific 2426 on train 180 arriving from St. Therese on its way into Windsor Station. And this series of 2400-class locomotive didn't have a feed water heater uh, in front of the smokestack. It was somewhere else, buried under a lot of metal. Sister Pacific 2408 backing out with its morning train from Windsor Station, and inbound is the Atlantic Limited from St. John's, New Brunswick, of course, diesel-powered. A lot of head-end traffic on that particular train, John. It seems almost endless, doesn't it? A real treat to see all of this steam uh, at the very end. Almost seems like it was the last gasp before uh, it was to vanish forever. Certainly a busy place in the morning between arriving commuter trains and empty trains backing up from Windsor Station, and of course in the background is a yard switcher marshalling cars for the Canadians' departure later in the day. Across from Westmount Station is the CPR Glen Roundhouse. This was the home for Montreal-based 
passenger engines, not only for the commuter operations out of Montreal Windsor Station, but in the days of steam operation, of course, for mainline passenger train sa service to Quebec City, down to the Maritimes, and west to Ontario. I had a very, very interesting experience uh, in the summer of 1949 of being able to spend a couple of weeks in that particular area photographing steam locomotives. The only unfortunate thing is they were all recorded on 116 uh, size prints. Who could afford uh, a Kodak 8 millimeter camera in those days, especially at the age of 16? Still, Doug, it's great that you have that record, even if it is black and white. Regular member of the commuter pool at the end, G3 class 2426, moving off the turntable and into the roundhouse for servicing and preparation for its afternoon run. Doug, this was the final day of 1959, and the snowstorm had now cleared out. A number of locomotives were being readied by noontime for not only the afternoon commuter traffic from Windsor Station, but also, as it turned out, for one of the last operations steam hauled ski train from Montreal up into the Laurentian Mountains. Pacific 2408 moving on to the turntable for turning and preparation for its later departure in the afternoon. Being New Year's Eve, there was a special operation, early departure commuter train at noontime from Windsor Station for Rigo behind Pacific 2426, here leaving Westmount Station and accelerating for Montreal West. The afternoon lineup at Glen Roundhouse included Royal Hudson 2820, Mikado 5175, and Pacific 1258. Doug, later that evening, I rode behind 5175, double heading with 1258, on what surely was the final double headed steam powered ski train up into the Laurentian Mountains. It was a magnificent ride. Air Pacific 1258 being serviced. Certainly watching this, it's hard to realize that diesels were absolutely everywhere else, it seems, except at the Glen Roundhouse that afternoon. You're about to see Consolidation 3642, a long time feature in the switching operations at the CPR's Glen Coachyard. Yes, these consolidation type locomotives were used quite uh, extensively by the CPR for coach yard switching, and I recall in Toronto we had 3662 regularly doing the job. There was one more chance of witnessing limited steam operation in Toronto early in 1960. This is Friday, January the 8th, and I received a phone call to say that D10 class 10 wheeler 1087 was on the way freight from Havelock to Toronto. Here she is backing over the West Toronto CPR CNR junction and down to the former CPR West Toronto station and then pulling forward around the curve and into the Lambton Yard. I guess Lambton at that time, John, was just a sea of dead. Uh, locomotives waiting for disposal. Some of them, of course, were on hold for a while, but uh, there must have been quite a pileup of engines at that particular time. Having left her train in Lampton Yard, 
1087 is running into Lambton Roundhouse, the only steam locomotive in operation at Lambton on that particular day. The last, the last holdout, Port McNichol, Saturday, March the 12th, 1960, consolidation 3632, switching in Port McNichol Yard. I believe that um, all of this operation was quite uh, uh, unofficial at the time, John, because as I recall, back in January of 1960, the CPR issued some press releases to the effect that steam was finished in Ontario. I think the CPR had forgotten about Port McNichol at the time of that press release, Doug. Only Hudson 2857 would appear in Port McNichol after this on some special excursion movements. And here she is on Sunday, March the 27th, 1960, on a return trip from Port McNichol, leaving West Toronto CPR Station for Toronto Union Station. John, it's been a superb hour, and I hope we're all going to get together again for Canadian Steam on the Move, Part 3, Fan Trips.